What's going on internet? My name is Craig and I want to give you a tutorial of how you can run a Web3 decentralized app or DAP directly on your Windows machine using the Windows subsystem for Linux. So what exactly is a Web3 app or a decentralized app or DApp or DAP? Um, it is a way that you can run basically a new form of app where the storage or the way that you're interacting with it isn't in a centralized manner. So I'll give a good example. Perhaps uh, you want to play games like chess online, but you're worried that all of your chess games as a professional player might be tampered with because they're all in this database that's owned only by one person who manages this database. And you're worried that when you play a game, they might erroneously go and edit that database or maliciously change it so that it says actually you lost it and you don't win any of the prize money. Uh, so what you could do instead is use a decentralized app where we all in a network agree yes you played this chess game here was the result and then here's you know the result maybe to your bank account at the end of the tournament and why you might want to do this in a decentralized way is that now that we can all agree on the contract and what it means to win a chess game um, that is just permanently out there and cannot be changed by any one individual in the network uh, it has to be changed by everybody during a consensus so it is a way to have a decentralized environment why these are called Web3 apps is because currently we are in Web 2.0, where the content that you make is stored in servers that are owned by a specific company or a specific person. And Web 3.0 is the idea that these content and then these values um, and any data that you have can be owned and stored by a decentralized network of, of people rather than one specific entity. Let's take a look at the actual example, which I'll show you how you can run on your machine, um, which is Tick Dap Toe. And so this builds on that chess example that I talked about earlier. It's a way that you can play Tick Dap Toe publicly in a decentralized way, so it's not stored by any one person. And so when I want to interact with this app, you can see I have it here just as a website running locally. And I'm running this in my Firefox browser in WSL because I'm actually using this totally as a Linux app. And um, I have an account here with this extension called MetaMask that has Ethereum associated with it. So this Ethereum number is, is fake. It is a locally running um, network that's just running on my machine. And so you could pretend as if I was a person taking a look with some Ethereum and I wanted to go play tic-tac-toe. So all I have to do is click create new game. The extension opens and it says, hey, you pay a little amount uh, to actually do this because you pay the people on the network who are mining the actual blocks. Um, that you're going to use to create this data. So I went ahead and, and initiated that game. It says we put in your request and you're waiting for a partner to accept. So on this other window, this represents somebody else, you know, who could be totally separate from me in another country anywhere in the world. And they have a different account. So I've switched to this other account, account three, and they see the request come on on the browser. And so they say, yeah, I'll play tic-tac-toe against you. And so then again, because we're modifying the state of the data, we pay a little bit of Ethereum to the people who would mine this block and carry out that transaction for us. And so the game starts and I can go ahead and each turn again, I'm modifying data. And so this goes and I can go back to my first account, which is my first game. And I see, yes, someone accepted my request and I can play from here. So what's really happening behind the scenes as I'm playing this is Anytime I put in a request, it's sending it out to the network, right? It's sending it out to a decentralized network of machines. These network of machines process this request. They agree that it was valid. They agree that it was from me. And then they carry out the data change that I've requested from this app. And so what we do, what we are necessarily doing is we all agree what the game of tic-tac-toe looks like and what the contract is of tic-tac-toe, where if I play you know, if I click here, then I'm saying I want to put an X here because I'm the X player, right? And wh where it gets really interesting is now as I'm about to win this game, right? I go here and, and I put in the winning final thing. It says you've won, congratulations. Now we all agree that this game is over and the data says that it's over. And now there's a public record that says I've won this game and here it is and and we can actually go look at that so this is app is called ganache um, and it lets you basically take a look at all of the different uh, accounts that i've created so these are the different accounts or users in my network 
And I can go and take a look at what contracts were created, like this tic-tac-toe is the actual state of the contract. And I can go look at the transactions. So here's me actually playing the game. Um, you can see that there's the play turn event, which is what happened. And then let's go take a look at a more interesting one. Here's play turn, that's fine. We'll take a look at play turn. And so you can see play turn, I was playing for this game, here were the inputs, and then this was mined by this sender to this contract for these amounts. So it's the exact same way that Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything else will monitor and have a public record of what money is sent to where or what coins are sent to where. Instead, we're doing this for modifying data of apps that we're all interacting with. You can even go ahead and take a look at all the blocks and the blockchain here. So this isn't meant to be an in-depth or um, detailed guide of Web3 and, and dApps and anything, but I want to give you a flavor of what it actually looks like um, to use it and what it would look like of using an app. Uh, so let's take a look now at how you can get that running on your machine and start playing around with it. I'm not going to walk you through the exact details of how to do everything, but there are going to be links in the description that I'm going to link out to. So please check those out to see the exact step-by-step. -step. I'm just going to show you what to install and, and quickly how to do it. So the first thing you need to do is install my absolute favorite tool, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, because we're going to be running this entirely as a Linux application on Windows. And so all you have to do is type in WSL space dash dash install in a PowerShell window with admin privileges, and you're good to go. Once you've done that and have a WSL prompt in front of you, go to the internet and go to uh, github.com slash craigloan dash microsoft slash tick dap toe. Again, just links in the description below. And we're going to get clone this so that we have this locally on my machine. Um, from there, we're going to install Ganache next. To do that, all you need to do is go to uh, travel suite slash Ganache dash UI on GitHub and then go to the releases and download it straight from there as a Linux app. So when installing Ganache, you're probably going to have to install some of these other tools as well that aren't just prepackaged inside of the Ubuntu WSL distro. So I'll show those commands as well. Next, we're going to install Firefox and we're going to install the MetaMask extension inside of it and create a quick account. Great. Last thing we need to do is set up Node to run our development environment as well as setting up Truffle to actually uh, execute contract commands to our network. So to do that, all we got to do is install NVM, the Node Manager, and then install the Truffle NPM package. Now we have everything that we need, so let's just do the setup to actually get started running our app. So I'm going to open up a, another terminal tab here, and I'm just going to open up some panes. So you could do this just by running multiple terminal windows if you want. And the first thing I'm going to start up is Ganache. Um, this is, again, the app that we use to create our um, network that we're interacting with, our fake network in this case. So add analytics are enabled, sure. Quick start Ethereum, and now I'm good to go. We have a list of 10 addresses on this network. And now next, I'm going to open up Firefox. And here I have um, my MetaMask extension enabled. And I am going to log in. So now I'm logged into my account. And I'm just going to add a network here. And so the network name, I'm going to put in just the name of our app, right? Like tick dap toe. The RPC URL. Um, in this case, it's localhost because the actual network that we're um, connecting to is here with port number 7545. So localhost 7545. And then we need the HTTP in front of this. HTTP colon colon 7545. The uh, chain by default um, is used is 8545. I think it's different each time. And then these are all optional. Ah, uh, there we go. The chain that was returned is 1337. So now we are connected and to our network, and I'm going to import one of the accounts that I have there. And so I can take the private key of one of these accounts. Let me cancel out of this. So let's use this account. And here is its private key, and I'm going to import that in here uh, into my account. So now I'm connected with that account. And let's import one more account. We'll do import account. It doesn't matter. These private keys are all um, fake necessarily. So uh, it doesn't matter that I'm showing it or even that I created an account name with it. So there we go. We have our accounts, account two and four, um, which correspond to these two accounts here. 
And now let's actually run this web server. So I'm gonna hop back over to our app, right? Tic Tap Doe. And the first thing I'm gonna run is truffle migrate. Um, this command lets you actually deploy the tic-tac-toe contract to the network. So now the network goes, I know what tic-tac-toe game is and I know how people play it. Um, so that's deployed now. And then we're going to run npm run dev. And this is going to run our actual thing at localhost 3000. From here, we'll go back to our website and you will see your account is null. Um, this is because we're actually not connected yet. Um, so we need to connect to our account. So we can go to connected sites down here. We manually connect these accounts to our current account. So I click them both and click next. And now uh, these are both connected to the network. So you can see the connected sign here. So now when I load, it goes, hey, here's my account. Um, and I'm ready to, to go off to the races. So the last thing I wanna do is actually jump into the code as I think it'd be really fun to take a look at that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is open a new tab here and we're going to go to our project file and I'm gonna go run code dot. This opens it up in VS Code um, using the Windows Services for Linux VS Code remote extension. So I just wanna walk you through what the actual code looks like because I think it's really interesting. We have our index.html file here. This loads our app.js and this is the main app JavaScript that's running on your client, so on your web browser, when we go ahead and use this. And essentially what we do is we first initiate Web3. Um, and so we do that by calling you know, the right APIs to get a Web3 client that understands how to go and work with these contracts. So this code is here. And then once those contracts are initiated and ready to go, um, we basically get our game state so we get whether the game is active or there are any game requests, and then we render those onto the page. And so that's essentially it. You're acting it totally as a client side app and you're connecting it totally to a network of apps or a network of people that are decentralized. What's really interesting is under this contracts option here. You can see that there's tic-tac-toe um, as an option here. And this is the actual code for what it looks like when you're interacting with this contract. If I go to extensions, I can actually install the Solidity extension here, and then this will give me um, color coding and debugging information uh, for my .sol files. And so once this installs, we'll be able to have you know a little bit of an easier view. Here we go. And we can see that um, basically what we're doing is we agree on, there's a struct of a tic-tac-toe game which contains you know an ID, the board, the player information of their addresses, whether it's finished, whose turn it is, et cetera, who won. And then we have agreed upon functions that let you do things like an add game request, remove a game request, uh, create one, join a game, play a turn, right? When you play a turn, what happens? Um, and then check if someone's won or not, right? So we can manually go in and check, so did somebody win this tic tac -Go game? And if yes, then it's over, right? Mark it as one. And so that's, this is the actual code that's running inside of the blockchain that you can go play around with. Uh, huge thanks to all the people who make these tools and work on them. And thank you to DAP University for creating the tutorial that I used to make this project. So you can find that all in the description as further learning. If you want to learn more about the Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, just go to aka.ms.wsldocs. And if you want to know more or have any more questions about this, you can reach me on Twitter at Craig A. Lowen. Thank you so much for tuning in.